friend on pop and paper technology. Here my my title residual content of two metal anthraquinone in eucalyptus pop obtained from craft cooking with natural anthraquinone derivative. First of all, I want to slightly introduce about anthraquinone. The common additive for uh, for alkaline cooking is anthraquinone. It was introduced uh, for the first time by Bach and Finn in 1972. Anthraquinone as additive can stabilize carbohydrate by oxidize of reducing and carbohydrate and also can accelerate lignin degradation. Commonly, commercial anthraquinone can be synthesized by using anthracene. This anthracene is oxidized to form anthraquinone uh, we call to form anthraquinone, we call it anthraquinone oxidation. Anthracene was distilled from coal tar. Uh, unfortunately, this coal tar contains not only uh, not only anthracene but also other contaminants such as 9 nitro anthracene, 2 nitro anthracene, penantren, and benzafurin. This contaminant can, can cause mutagenic and carcinogenic effect. As we know, anthraquinone has great advantage in the pulp industry. However, there are regulatory issues associated with anthraquinone, uh, with the use of anthraquinone. Some, uh, some of the impurities in anthraquinone can be mutagenic and carcinogenic, and also give negative effect on humans based on report International Agency for Research and Cancer. Research and cancer. Germany's Federal Institute for Risk Assessment (BFR) removed anthraquinone for chemical approved for manufacturing paper and paper board in contact with food because of mutagenicity and carcinogenicity effect of anthraquinone. Two uh, anthraquinone is one of anthraquinone derivative that could uh, that could be used as additive for craft cooking. Uh, there are two methods to obtain uh, two methyl anthraquinone. Firstly, uh, to obtain two anthra uh, methyl anthraquinone by extract of thick wood or tecton granules, since it is uh, known as one of natural anthraquinone derivative uh, in thick tecton granules. And secondly, MAQ can be synthesized by some methods. There are by this other reaction or using uh, one for naphthoquinone with isoprene to form two metal anthraquinone, or another other method uh, is peridot crap reaction using potalic anhydride with toluene to form two metal anthraquinone. So, thus to overcome this problem suggested by BFR and others. Uh, to MAQ uh, will be applied to craft cooking in the study. Uh, our hypothesis to MAQ as additive is expect, expected to have the same benefit as anthraquinone for cooking process, but to have no harmful carcinogenic effect. And the objective of this research are to determine the beneficial effect of 2 methyl anthraquinone on craft cooking by the use of eucalyptus wood chip and also to determine the residual amount of 2 methyl anthraquinone in the unbleached pulp and bleached pulp. So we go to the material and method for craft cooking. This is the material that we use for craft cooking. First, we use eucalyptus globulus from plantation in Chile. And also we use Tecnona granite from plantation in Indonesia and Myanmar. We use commercial to MAQ for with 90% purity with from Alpha Cesar and also uh, sodium hydroxide to molar from Wakopur chemical and also sodium sulfide uh, from Kanto chemical. Uh, so we use thick extractive contain to MAQ as additive for craft cooking process. To get thick extractive, first we extract Tecnona grandis. Uh, powder using two solvent, uh, acetone or ethyl acetate to get high amount of 2 MAQ. Then this extract uh, will be used as additive to craft cooking. And for cooking condition, we use 50 gram eucalyptus globulus uh, based on over dried wood. Then add soluble MAQ preparation uh, 
from commercial and from extract that contain this extract contain 0.03% MAQ to conduct craft cooking this with this cooking condition 145 degrees celsius with the uh, cooking time is 2 or 3 hour liquid to wood ratio is 5 to MAQ to MAQ dosage is 0.03% with active alkali dosage range uh, using 16 until 19% uh, with sulfidity 30% this, then this process is sorted the unbleached pulp. Then we, uh, conduct, uh, we conducted elemental free chlorine bleaching with this quen to obtain final bleach pulp. All pulp will be would be analyzed by GCFID or, or GCMS to determine to MAQ that still remain in the in the pulp. So th we, this is the analysis residual to MAQ content in pulp uh, by using GCFID and GCMS extractive followed to tapi P204 OM88, kappa number followed tapi 236 OM13, and brightness by Tokyo Densoku color matter TC3600. Uh, now we uh, go to result from uh, to MAQ as pumping catalyst. Now, this is TLC. Uh, this is TLC from acetone or acetone or uh, acetate extractive, and we compare with commercial MAQ. If we see from quantitative using TLC and then supported by GFC, GCFID, two MAQ content in extractive, uh, in, in MAQ content in acetone extractive had higher content to uh, had higher content of two MAQ. Uh, then echo, then uh, other acetate extractive. Uh, then this acetone extract would be used for craft cooking to compare commercial MAQ. So the echo to school bulus uh, and beach pub without additive were prepared by uh, craft cooking with two level of cooking time, uh, two hour and three hours, and also four level active four levels of active alkali charge active alkali 16% until active alkali 90%. The relationship between active alkali charge and kappa number of three hour cooking and beach pub were lower than those of two hour cooking. It showed that by prolonging the cooking time until three hour uh, can reduce the kappa number until uh, four, four until six point in the same active alkali. Before we uh, conduct the MAQ dosage, uh, firstly, the effect uh, of 2 MAQ addition in the crab cooking was studied. Uh, the relationship between 2 MAQ doses and and which crab MAQ pulp yield are shown. Uh, uh, are shown uh, the 0.03 doses of 2 MAQ could increase the pulp yield by compare the no additive. The increase in pulp yield is more than one percent. However, the increment of two MAQ doses from zero point zero six percent until zero point zero nine percent didn't affect the pulp yield increment significantly. Thus, zero point zero three percent of the MAQ doses was used for further experiment. So, the effect of soluble MAQ addition from commercial and, effect, uh, and extractive on craft cooking was clarified this research. The addition of two MAQ result in decrement uh, kappa number, decrement on unbleached pub kappa number at the same active alkali compared uh, with no additive, uh, with the black line with no additive. Interestingly, uh, the thick extract when used as pumping catalyst gave significant lower kappa number than commercial uh, to MAQ at the same active alkali doses that are uh, those are 16% active alkali and 17% active alkali. So the relationship between kappa number and pulp yield indicated uh, that two MAQ addition could promote the declinification process during cup cooking while maintaining the pulp yield. Uh, the result showed the application to MAQ can increase the pulp yield, the increased pulp yield uh, 0.3 until 1.7% 1, 1. compared to crab cooking 
without uh, additive at the same carbon number. Also, for thick extract, when used as popping catalyst, gave significantly higher pop yield than commercial to MAQ at the same alpha of Kali dosage. So we further evaluated the brightness and viscosity effect using two MAQ with two active alkali. The left is uh, active alkali 60% and the right is active alkali 70%. Uh, so we see the tendency from unbleached pop uh, until final bleach pop. The brightness is increased and viscosity uh, and viscosity decreased. This is the same tendency with 17% active alkali. So this is the most important of my research to know the mutagenic effect of the MAQ from commercial and also from uh, uh, extractive with, uh, this, uh, with using AMSS and to analyze the residual to MAQ in the pulp. Uh, the assay is to assay AMS bacterial mutagenicity assay. This, the assay is to assess the ability to MAQ from this other direction or or from field craft fraction or from to liquid extractive to induce mutation in Salmonella trypenium uh, tester strain with TA100. This is Salmonella uh, trypenium doesn't contain histidine, so we call it Salmonella trypenium histidine negative. They cannot grow. Uh, uh, they cannot grow because they don't have histidine. So when they when we put the some chemical reagent. Uh, we can uh, we incubate. Uh, if we see the plant is no colony, that means the chemical is cannot cause uh, mutagenic. But when we see the uh, after incubation in the plant many colonies, that means the chemical is mutagenic. So because the the bacteria doesn't have histidine negative can be ch uh, changed to uh, histidine positive because of chemical agent. So that's why they can grow. So this is the AMS test report of 2 MAQ. Uh, in the table one, mutagenicity of 2 MAQ using Salmonella trypenium. 2 MAQ by these alders with doses 0 until 5,000 uh, microgram per plate using strain TA100 with 10% uh, red liver. The result is negative. Also for 2 methyl anthracinone by field crop reaction with the same dose 0 until 5,000 thousand microgram per pet uh, is the negative uh, but however as a, uh, but using acetate extractive of liquid with the dose 5000 the result is positive uh, to uh, the result is 20 refer term micro, micro milligram per plate so uh, this is the important part to determine residual to MAQ in the pub if this uh, to MAQ MAQ from acetate extractive of thick wood remain in the pulp. It can be transferred from the food packaging to from food packaging to the food. To ensure the safety of food, we analyze to uh, the two MAQ from unbleached pulp, uh, oxygen bleached pulp, and final bleached pulp. Uh, then we cut it. Uh, we, and then we extract using 250 ml acetone for six hours in socket extraction until. The solvent had no color. Then solution were evaporated uh, to near dryness. Then the amount of the AQ in the acetate extractive from all pulp were analyzed uh, using GCFID and GCMS. So the residual to MAQ content of pulp were determined. Uh, the relationship between uh, active alkali dosage and the residual to MAQ uh, content uh, of unbleached pulp uh, is displayed. Uh, the, there was the decrement tendency in the residual to MAQ content of the unbleached pulp by increasing active uh, alkali dosage. Uh, the to MAQ for for beach, uh, for beach pulp were confirmed by with GCMS. The residual to MAQ was not detected uh, by GCMS in the final beach pulp. This study clarified the almost all to MAQ which was used for the cooking process process were not remaining in the pub. So this pub would be safe for food packaging. Conclusion, thick extract when used uh, as popping catalyst gives significantly lower carbon number and more increased pulp yield than commercial to MAQ. 
There is the detriment tendency in residual to emit the content of iron bisphosphat by increasing the active alkali dosage. The study clarified that almost two mq which was used for cooking process didn't remain in pulp thus uh, this pulp would be safe for food packaging material that's all thank you very much i give it back to chairperson thank you for your nice presentation so now let's open question and comments from the audience do you have any questions so if you have any questions Please talk on the microphone or raise your hand on the system. We also welcome write your comment on chat box. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, then. So may I ask, uh, question so so i'd like to ask you why residual maq was decreased with decreased when active alkali charge increase on cooking mm -hmm. yes uh so your question why yes maq content is decreased with uh increase the active alkali right yeah, because uh, the MAQ, uh, the, the, when they uh, reduce to form the uh, antrahydroxy uh, to MAQ, antrahydroxy to met antrahydroxy, uh, they can reduce the active uh, uh, lignin content. Also, the two MAQ uh, can promote the active alkali. Uh, acceleration lignification so that's why the MAQ uh, react uh, can uh, reacted with uh, uh, can uh, react uh, with and uh, to lignin so become the decrease active alkali and so become the decrease with MAQ content with the, uh, increase the active alkali because the MAQ can react uh, can uh, reacted a uh, uh, reaction with the uh, lignin so they also can promote active alkali to to reduce uh, active uh, lignin content. Okay, thank you very much. So does anyone have any questions from audience? We still have two minutes. So no question. So may I ask one more question? It's okay. Mm -hmm. So so you use thick crude extractives for cooking. So I'd like to confirm what kind of other component is in the thick crude extractives. Uh, yeah. Uh, from the uh, extractive, uh, uh, yes, compare commercial, they can give the highest pop yield. Also, yes. uh, for the lower, uh, the carbon mm -hmm. number, compare commercial because yeah. uh, this thick extractive not only contain met two metal anthraquinone but also other quinone derivative. Mm -hmm. This quinone derivative also has effect for as popping catalyst. So for the some many paper already proved, uh, they contain some like no, uh, anthraquinone also and also other quinone. So that's why uh, can give higher uh, effect as catalyst compared just only commercial pure uh, two methyl anthraquinone. Okay, thank you very much. I understand. So, do you have any questions? So no questions. So it's almost time. Okay, so let's mo move on to next presentation. Thank you very much for your nice presentation, Yuria. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. So the next speaker is Chan Chen Chen Yu from 
National Chanshin University, Taiwan. So could you share your slide? Okay. 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 So the next presentation is the development of seed fiber by saber specials for new material of paper making by Chan Chen Chen Yu, Pan Yuan Shi, Xiao Meng Guan, Lin and Lin Yu Jin from Department of Forestry, National Chenxin University, Taiwan. The speaker is Chan Chen Chen Yu. Please start. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Zhang Jian Yu. I'm from Taiwan Zhongxing University. The development of sea fiber or sea bus as a new material of paper making. This is my content. The report will include introduction, materials and method, results and discussion, and conclusions. Paper making technology began to develop vigorously around 100 AD. At that time, most such as hemp and bamboo. With the development of wood pulp, however, in the past two decades, the public paid more attention for, to environmental issues urging wood pulp. So the application of recycled pulp and non wood pulp rise again. Among the commonly used of non wood fiber, car park and cotton have long fibers and high cellulose content. They are often added to wood pulp to improve the paper strength. Take cotton as an example. It is mainly used as a raw material for banknot paper. Now I am going to introduce Sebas Bersia. Sebas Bersia is a scientific name of the beauty tree. It is distributed to the deciduous forests of South America because of its fast growth and beautiful flowers. It is imported and widely planted as a street tree for ornamental purpose. However, because the seed fibers are easy to drift and cause respiratory disease in the people, if we can use the fibers, their negative effect will be reduced. In the study, we analyzed the fiber type and composition of the seed fibers, then popping and made it into paper, test the paper properties evaluate the potential of the seed fiber for popping and paper making. Currently, the popping method is divided into mechanical popping and chemical popping. The mechanical popping mainly break wood into fibers by mechanical force. Because of its low paper strength, it is mainly used to blend pop. The chemical pulp is pulp obtained by treating wood with chemicals to dissolve lignin or other impurities. According to the different chemicals, it is divided into craft pulping, survive pulping, and soda pulping. And among them, the sulfur containing method is mainly used for raw materials with higher lignin content, like wood because of the low lignin content of beauty tree seed fibers, we choose to cook them by soda process. And according to the purpose, 
We use a two-level factorial design to analyze the effect of each factor on the experiment and whether there is an interaction between the factors, which can effectively reduce the number of experimental groups. The fibers of the study are picked up from Taichung City. We dry the fiber at the low temperature of 45 degrees Celsius for at least 24 hours to maintain the quality of the dry seed fibers and remove the seeds from the seed fiber and pack it into a zipper bag to avoid mold. The experiment is divided into three phases. First, we measure the fiber length, width, edge content, and chemical composition to establish the database of the fiber properties. Then, the popping is carried out with two level factorial design experiments. The experiment Variable are sodium hydroxide dosage and liquid ratio. Cooking at the same temperature and time. After cooking, the fibers are refined by PF5 for 22,000 revolutions, and the free net is measured. The fibers are made into 60 grams per square meter hand sheet and measure the Measure the property of the paper, such as tensile index, bird index, and tear index. After the experiment, we have the following result. This table shows that, compared with result of previous research, the length of seed fiber of beauty tree is greater than that of softwood and hardwood and the width is between softwood and hardwood. Compared with car park, the length of beauty tree seed fiber is shorter to that of the car park fiber, while the width is similar. It is expected that the application of beauty tree seed fiber in pulp and paper can improve the mechanical pr properties of paper. This result of the research will compare with the wood fibers in previous research. The seed fiber of beauty tree had higher cellulose content and lower lignin content. Compared with copper fiber, the seed fibers had more hollow cellulose than that of the copper. And the lignin content of seed fiber were less than copper fibers. Therefore, it is expected that the popping yield of beauty tree seed fiber will be better than wood pulp. Additionally, the consumption of energy and chemicals in the cooking process will be less. This is the result of the experiment. According to this table, we can know the liquid ratio of 1 to 14 and Sodium hydroxide dosage of 6% had the highest tensile index, birth index, and yield. And the op optimal condition of tear index was at the liquid ratio of 1 to 18 and sodium hydroxide dosage of 10%. The effect of liquid ratio and sodium hydroxide dosage on tensile birth index and yield is negative. While they have a positive effect on tear index. The absolute effect value of sodium hydroxide dosage is greater than that of the liquid ratio and the mutual effect between the two is not significant. This is an analyzed chart of yield. Figure shows that in the same sodium hydroxide dosage, the yield decreases with the increase of the liquid ratio. And in the same liquid ratio, the yield decreases with the increase of the so sodium hydroxide dosage. 
Cooking with six percent sodium hydroxide dosage and one to fourteen liquid ratio had the best yield. In the result of paper properties, the figure shows that in the same sodium hydroxide dosage, when the liquid ratio is higher, the tensile and burst index will be lower, and when the sodium hydroxide dosage is higher the tensile and burst index will be higher too. While the result of tear index is opposite. As shown in this table, when the freeness is the same, the tensile index of beauty tree paper is higher than that of pine, pine craft paper and cassia craft paper while the burst index is lower than that too. And the tear index of beauty tree paper is lower than pine craft paper and cassia craft paper. The tear index of sea fiber paper is between pine craft paper and cassia craft paper. The above results show that the beauty tree had excellent tensile strength. If it, it is applied to paper, it is expected to improve the tensile strength of the paper. The lower burst index may be due to the excessively long fiber length and poor fiber interweaving due to the insufficient refining. In the future applications, it is necessary to increase the strength of the re refining to fully utilize its fiber characteristic. Now I would like to recap the main point. For fiber type analyze, the results show that the C fiber length of Sebas Versia is longer than the wood while it is shorter than car park. For the chemical composition, the holocerous contents of Sebas Versia is higher than that of wood and car park, while lignin content is lower than that of wood. It will re produce the highest yield with 6% sodium hydroxide and 1 to 14 liquid ratio. Compared with wood pulp, the paper tensile of the beauty tree stick fiber is higher than that of blanched northern pine craft pulp and blanched acacia craft pulp, which show the pulping potential of beauty tree stick fiber. The effect of liquid ratio and sodium hydroxide dosage on tensile index, burst index, and yield is negative, while they have a positive effect on the tear index. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. Thank you for your nice presentation. Now let's open questions and comment from the audience. Do you have any question from audience? Oh yes, please. Sylvia from University of Tsukuba, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yu, for the nice presentation. I would like to asking about uh, your tensile index uh, result. It is in the slide, you say that the beauty tree has a higher uh, tensile index compared to the classic uh, acacia uh, craft pulp. Could you yes. please explain why this has happened and what? Why oh. is the reason? Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Because the say basbasia sees fiber, uh, fiber length is longer than that, so I think it is. Uh, paper strand is uh, is higher than that. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions?
Okay, so may I ask one question? So your result shows cooking condition affected the physical property of pulp very well. So I would like to confirm, did you measure the carbohydrate content of these pulps? I think hemicellulose content of pulp should affect this paper physical property. Lignin contents. Sorry, I, is, I can't uh, hear you. Is it the lignin contents? I test the lignin content is from. Sorry, can you hear? Okay, now I, now I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> the leak, uh, the copper fiber is is the lignin contents in my report. Sorry, I can't hear your voice. Maybe she can off his her video. Off. Okay. Hello. Can you hear? Hey. Okay. Yes. The kappa fiber, the kappa number. Yes. Right? Uh, so I mean the. It is the. Rip, uh, so he hemicellulose content in pulps. Hemicellulose. Yes. Oh, I I uh, I didn't okay. test the hemicellulose. I just test the holocellulose. Okay. Yes. <laughs> thank you for your <laughs> advice. Okay. Thank you. So, do you have any questions from audience? Can can I have a question? Oh, yes, please, Professor Enomae. Okay, my name is uh, Enomae, University of Tsukuba. And uh, when you com compare the strength of paper between uh, different fiber sources, and how about the sheet of formation? So very even or in, in homoge homogeneous for uh, Siba fibers. Uh, all of the hand sheet is made by my hands. So I think the process is maybe the same. Ah, so sheet formation, the uh, homo homogeneity, yes. uh, 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 even the level is similar. Uh, okay, <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So do you have any questions? If no questions, let's move on to next presentation. Thank you for your nice presentation. Thank you. So the next speaker is Shin Yong Park from Seoul National University, Korea. Can you share your slide? Uh Thank you. So the title of presentation is Characteristics of CNF Epoxy Composite with Different Properties of CNF and CNF Sheet by Shin Yang Park, Shima Yubiyuk, Zoe Ngu, Hai Yang Yang from National University, Seoul National University, Korea, the speaker is Shin Yong Park. Please start. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon. I am Shin Yong Park, a PhD student from Seoul National University in Korea. I am first for giving me a chance to present in this conference. Uh, today, my presentation topic is characteristics of CNF epoxy composite with 
different properties of CNF and CNF sheet. Now let me start my presentation. These are the content that we will present. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about the background of this research. As we know, cellulose now favors CNF for mechanically treated cellulose fibers whose widths are narrower than 100 nanometers. In addition to its renewability and biodegradability, CNF has many advantages such as high mechanical properties, high surface reactivity, transparency, and design flexibility. Thanks to these advantages, CNF has been mixed with many polymers and it applied as a reinforcing material for a composite. Uh, CNF has very narrow width and it can reduce the light scattering which pass through the CNF. Thus, we can see the CNF suspension or CNF sheet is optically transparent. So many studies have used CNF for optically transparent composite by itself or by mixing with other polymers. Among them, several studies show that transparent composite could be manufactured by mixing CNF with uh, transparent resin such as epoxy or acrylic resin. Epoxy resin is one of the representative thermoset material. Uh, it is transparent and hydrophobic material and it has chemical resistance and adhesive force. So it can be used in many applications. Since CNF and epoxy has similar reflective index, when we mix CNF and epoxy together, Transparent composite with increased mechanical strength could be obtained. Uh, from 2005, several studies have been conducted to produce CNF epoxy composite with various methods. Among them, the method with impregnation of CNF sheet into epoxy resin or coating epoxy on the sheet resulted in high transparency composite because uh, immersion of epoxy resin into the sheet could reduce the light scattering of the sheet. Uh, composites made from this method showed thickness below 100 or 200 micrometers and light transparency above 80%. Although many studies about CNF epoxy composite have been introduced, they usually focused on the improvement on the mechanical properties. Only a limited number of studies dealt with factors affecting optical properties of the composite. Therefore, it should mm, it seems that the study for vectors affecting both optical and mechanical properties of the CNF epoxy composite should be conducted. In addition, produced composites were usually seen whose width thickness were below 200 micrometers. To expand the possible application field of CNF epoxy composite, for example, alternative to glass, more thick and strong composite seem to be needed. When we think about the factors affecting the properties of the composite, these factors from the properties of CNF, properties of CNF sheet, and the method of composite preparation can be considered. In case of the properties of CNF, uh, so size of fibers, the functional group of cellulose and its hydrophobicity can impact, influence on the, these properties of the composite. In case of CNF sheet, its transparency, porosity, and grams of the sheet might determine this kind of composite uh, properties. Also, in process of composite preparation, the uh, chemical composition of resin hardener and catalyst, the viscosity of resin and its mixing method with CNF and curing process also can be effect, effect on the properties of the composite. Uh, thus, in this study, we try to, to investigate the effect of these factors on the properties of the CNF epoxy composites. For this, we controlled uh, the properties of CNF and CNF sheet. For CNF, CNF, uh, we use CNF with different size by controlling the carboxy group content of the CNF. And for CNF sheet, solvent exchange of the sheet with ethanol was conducted to increase the porosity and 
instability with ethanol, with, with epoxy. Also, we uh, control the sheet cremage. By controlling these factors, we tried to, to see how these factors affected the optical and mechanical properties of the composite. Finally, by adjusting these factors, we tried to, to prepare optically transparent, mechanically strong, and six CNF epoxy composite. Uh, now I will explain materials and methods used in this study. Uh, we used hardwood bleached craft pulp as a raw material. For preparation of carboxy methylated CNF, CM CNF, uh, carbox methylation of the pulp was conducted, and the carbox growth content was uh, controlled by adjusting the amount of carbox methylation agent. Uh, we obtained two kinds of carboxy methylated pulp, uh, which were whose carbox growth content was 280 and 550 micromole per gram, respectively. This untreated and carbox methylated pulp was ground with spumas colloidal to make CNF. Uh, untreated pulp was ground for 24 times, and carbox methylated pulp was ground for 10 times. Then we prepare a CNF sheet with this CNF. To investigate the effect of the solvent exchange of the CNF sheet, sheet were prepared in two different ways. Dried CNF sheet were prepared by vacuum filtration of CNF suspension, wet pressing, and hot pressing. In case of solvent exchange CNF sheet, vacuum filtrated CNF sheet was wet pressed and soaked in the ethanol as a wet state for more than 12 hours. The solvent exchange CNF sheet was not dried. Each sheets were then impregnated in the epoxy resin mixture for the preparation of the composite. Epoxy mixture was prepared by mixing this epoxy resin hardener and catalyst in this ratio. Uh, prepared CNF sheets were impregnated in this epoxy mixture and the epoxy impregnated sheet were then stacked in two layers to improve the mechanical strength and thickness of the composite. Then it was cured in hot press for one hour. And the optical properties and the mechanical properties of the composite were investigated. For optical properties, light transmissions and the haze of the composite were measured. And for mechanical properties, Tensile strengths of each composite were tested. Now, first, let me talk about the result of this study. Uh, this is the pictures of uh, dried UCNF sheet composite with two layers of dried UCNF sheet and with solvent exchange UCNF sheet. Uh, pictures were taken at a distance of a few centimeters from the background paper. We can see as epoxy penetrated into the sheet, CNF epoxy composite became more transparent uh, than dried sheet. Moreover, it was shown that composite prepared with solvent exchange sheet showed better transparency than that with dried CNF sheet. The haze value of dried CNF sheet was about 76%, but that of the composite with dried CNF decreased to 30%, and after solvent exchange, it decreased further to 26%. Uh, this, these are those SCM images of surface of dried CNF sheet and solvent exchange CNF sheet. We can see that compared to dried CNF sheet, solvent exchange sheet had more porous structure. Also, it seemed that ethanol made CNF more miscible with epoxy resin. Thus, Epoxy could penetrate into the solvent exchange CNF sheet more easily, and re it resulted in the production of more transparent composite. So we could conclude that uh, solvent exchange of CNF sheet helps to prepare more transparent composite. Uh, now we will see the effect of the carboxyl content of the CNF. These are the SCM images of CNF with different carboxyl content. And the graph shows the 
favor with distribution of each CNF. It is already known that pulp fibers with a higher carb con group content result in CNF with narrower favorable width. As shown in this figure, CM CNF had narrower favorites than new CNF, and higher carb group content of CM CNF led to more uniform favorites, which corresponded to previous researches. And these are the light transitions and the age of composite prepared with two layers of each CNF sheet. We can see that higher carb group content of CNF led to the increase in light scattering, light transitions, and decrease in the age of the composite, which means more transparent composite was obtained because higher carb content CNF had narrower fibers. Thus, it can be said that the more approach of CNF also played an important role to determine the optical properties of the CNF epoxy composite. And narrower fibers would be good to increase the transparency of the composite. Then we tried to see the effect of sheet grammage on the properties of the composite. For this, first we prepared CM CNF sheet with different grammage, 20, 30, and 40 GSM. Each sheet was solvent exchanged with ethanol, and the composites were prepared using this sheet. As same as the composite with previous ones, composites were prepared by stacking two layers of each CM CNF sheet. Uh, these are the thickness and density of the composite with different CNF sheet grams. It was shown that the thickness and the density of the composite increased as the sheet grams increased. And this slide shows the optical properties of the composite. Each composite showed high transparency whose transmittance was over 90% and the hedge was under 6%. But compared to neat epoxy, the hedge was higher. Among the composite, composites with 20 GSM sheet, which was the lowest grammage, uh, showed hedge of about 4%, which was relatively lower than that of the composite with higher grammage sheet. And this graph shows the, make the tensile strength, strain at break, and elastic modulus of the composite. In composites with 20 GSM sheet, it showed increased tensile strength and modulus compared to neat epoxy, which indicated that CNF was effective for reinforcing the composite. On the contrary, sheet with 30 or 40 GSM could not improve the mechanical strength of the composite. Rather, the composites prepared with those sheet had lower tensile strength than neat epoxy. Thus, it was concluded that CNF sheet with lower grams was more beneficial to produce CNF epoxy composite with high transparency and improved mechanical strength. Uh, we tried to find the region of this result. And this is the optical microscope image of the cross section of the composite with 20 GSM and sheet and 40 GSM sheet. For better observation, these composites were prepared by stacking four layers of CNF sheet. In the last figure, the layer of the CNF sheet and epoxy resin cannot be distinguished clearly. It seems that this is because epoxy resin penetrated deep side of the CNF sheet. On the contrary, in the right figure, we can see the interface between the CNF and epoxy more clearly at this compared to the left figure. It indicated that epoxy could not penetrate deep side inside of the high gram sheet. So we could find the difference in the penetration behavior of epoxy resin into the sheet. And maybe this difference resulted in the optical and mechanical properties of the composite. In addition, the content of CNF in the composite might also contribute to this result. Composite with 20 GSM sheet had CNF content of about 8%, while composite with 40 GSM sheet had CNF about 15%, which was twice higher. 
Thus, we can also consider that too high amount of CNF in the composite relate to the decrease in the mechanical strength. Now, I will summarize this presentation. We tried to prepare optically transparent and thick CNF epoxy composite by impregnating CNF sheet into epoxy resin and multilayering them. During this process, we control the carbon content of the CNF and properties of the CNF sheet by solvent exchange and adjustment of the sheet grains. It was shown that solvent exchange of the CNF sheet by impregnating sheet into the solvent could improve the transparency of the composite. In addition, higher carbon group contains same CNF with narrower fibers was, was beneficial for preparation of the transparent composite. In case of the effect of sheet grammage, lower grammage sheet led to the higher transparency and higher strength of the composite. Finally, we could obtain thick, transparent, and mechanically reinforced CNF epoxy composite. Uh, this study was also published in Nanometrics Journal, so you can check more details of this study in this paper. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your nice presentation. Now let's open questions and comments from the audience. So, so one question, okay. So, Abby Octavia from Center for Pulp and Paper, Indonesia, please. Uh, thank you for uh, Mrs. Takahashi for the opportunity. Uh, I would like to ask two questions. First, about the uh, resin. Uh, would you consider to choose another type of resin instead of uh, BPA? And the second question is, how about the preparation of your uh, experiment? Uh, did you use uh, the same thickness because you prepare a different type of grammage? Uh, I think if uh, you prepare a same thickness, so you can get the good result of haze. If you prepare a different kind of thickness, uh, that's why maybe the haze affected by the thickness. And about the tensile strength, or maybe you can consider to uh, report it in tensile index because uh, we can uh, think or consider of preparing a different type of village. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your question. First, did you ask about the Kind of epoxy resin. Uh, actually, uh, we supplied this epoxy resin from uh, from a company in Korea. So uh, we did not try any other epoxy resin. But um, in my opinion, if we used the different kind of epoxy, the composite properties can be also uh, influenced be influenced by the kind of this epoxy resin. And for uh, the effect of the thickness of the sheet, as you said, um, the thickness of the sheet uh, would be affect influenced on the uh, this optical properties. So, as I mentioned, the higher gram sheet had uh, higher thickness, so uh, the resin would be harder to implant it deep side of the sheet. And this behavior might affect uh, uh, this result. For mechanical strength, uh, we did not check the tensile index of the composite, but uh, the composite with higher gram sheet, like 30 or 40 GSM, it was really, uh, really brittle compared to that with 20 GSM sheet. So 
I think uh, the higher Greenwich, too high Greenwich might uh, have a bad influence on the mechanical strength of the composition. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Okay, if no question, so I would like to finish this presentation. Hi, Thank you very much. Yes. Professor Isogai, rising hand. Ah, sorry, yes. Professor Isogai, please. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, very interesting uh, presentation. I, I expect that uh, such application of CNF uh, uh, polymer composite. Uh, I just one uh, 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 two question. One is a. Uh, uh, how about in the case of such eight percent? Uh, uh, 16%, 15% uh, CNF content. Are there any influence on the mechanical properties at the high humidity conditions or not? Uh, his first question is that uh, how could we measure the CNF content in the composite? No, no, no. Uh, as a 8 or 15% CNF content, yes. maybe mechanical properties will yeah. be influenced by you know, high humidity conditions or like this. These data may be measured at uh, constant uh, humidity, like 50%, 23 Celsius or something like that, right? Oh, yes. We... Yes. Uh, are there any influence of that, uh, uh, relative humidity, high relative humidity on the mechanical properties? Mm -hmm. Before we measure the tensile strengths, we mm -hmm. put them in the uh, room temperature with, uh, with uniform humidity for, for more than three days. So I think there was not uh, effect of the difference on humidity on the... Oh. Okay, I un I understand. I expect your you know further experiment measured at high humidity condition or dry condition uh, at various humidity condition because CNF is maybe influenced by such by such uh, okay, uh, moisture. Question. Okay, thank you. And one more question: uh, Is it it takes it took a long time to get the uh, uh, CNF film by? Filtration, vacuum filtration. How long? How many minutes? Uh, yes, in particularly this higher carboxyl content. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it 40, 40 gram per square meter. Forty base weight is a very thick. It's good way, a good, uh, a good job. But uh, uh, how many minutes, hours does it take to make such? A, uh, films or sheets. I think it can be depend on the consistency of the CNF okay. transformation. Mm -hmm. But uh, in our case, uh, the 40 GSM sheet uh, took about one and a half hour. Okay, and in this uh, uh, solvent exchange treatment means yeah. that you pick up without drying and uh, exchange from water to ethanol? Uh, we, or once dried and then ethanol? No, we didn't uh, dry. We just, okay, never dried yes. wet seed uh, soaked in ethanol to, yes. for the solvent exchange? Yes. Okay, good. Very good work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have any question from audience? So if no question, I'd like to finish this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
So now program proceed a little bit ahead of schedule. So we will start next presentation 4.40 on time. We will have short break.
Effie, Effie, it's time to start. Please upload your file. Hi. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to present about our um, study. Just a moment. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay. So next speaker <laughs> is Dr. Abby Octavia. The title of presentation is Verification of Technologies for Producing Mechanical Pulp from Non-Wound Materials, a case study of oil palm empty fruit bunch in Indonesia. This study is a collaboration of Center for Pulp and Paper, Ministry of Industry, and PIC Company Limited, Japan, Kurogo Company Limited Japan, Yamada Consulting Singapore, Taizen Company Limited Japan. So please start. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for Mrs. Uh, Takahashi for this opportunity. I would like to present about our study. This is a consortium study with a team from Japan. Uh, with the title of Verification of Technologies for Producing Mechanical Pulp from Non-Wood Materials, a Case Study of Oil Palm and the Fruit Bunch in Indonesia. Uh, I would like to present about two different parts. The first part is about experimental techniques using uh, technology from Japan, and the second part is a business model calculation. Uh, the background why this uh, study is important because fiber loss in recycled paper mill are about 10 to 17 percent higher than virgin pulp and paper mill due to increasing of fines and filler. And fiber also only effectively recycled five to seven times. That's why in a paper mill the sludge will increase and also will get uh, will burden for the wastewater treatment plant. And the other thing that is also very important in Indonesia case about the import of regulation in Indonesia. Until now, we are still struggling um, very hard to get the import of uh, recycled paper. And as well as the uh, Ministry of Trading also tightened their policy because of the contamination uh, percentage that uh, in coming to Indonesia, it's become a very a big problem. Uh, and also, Indonesia still imported around 3.2 tons of waste paper, or about 50% of total capacity in recycled paper mills. That's why this is a great opportunity for this study to introduce a non pulp from EFP. And EAB also, in Indonesia, mostly utilized as fertilizer in palm oil. This is very important. You actually, for a scientific study, for EAB, the CN ratio is not good for the fertilizer because EAB contains a very high amount of cellulose. But for a good fertilizer, the CN ratio should be low. That's why EFB actually is not suitable to become a fertilizer. We have to think about another uh, added value to change EFB from waste into uh, higher value of things. So, the about the EFB availability in Indonesia. Indonesia. We are the number one in the world of oil palm plantation. There are a lot. There are around 
16.381 million hectares in 2020. And we also produce a biomass side product. The side product of EAP around 10% is similar to 42 million tons. And this is a huge problem in Indonesia. That's why we think to consider to utilize EFB into farm. So the aim of this study is to research EFB farm patterns and verify the quality of product using gimmick and master machine and verify the business model. The scope of this study is pilot scale verification of mechanical pulp of EFB using caustic soda and compare it with repulse commercial brown paper. This is the experimental method. At first, EFB was cut into two centimeter length and then soaked overnight with water with ratio one to 20. And then we used muscle and gimmick with the variation of caustic soda from zero to 8% with the operation of pilot scale around 60 kilogram oven dry EFB per hour. And then the EFB part uh, this refines and screen and beating and then hand sheet and we measure about the physical properties of pulp sheet and then we compare it with commercial brown paper. Uh, we think this is important to uh, say about the result of the oil content in EFB because some um, paper manufacturer thinks EFB is not good enough to, to make uh, into pulp. But using this technology after pulping, as we can see, the extractive in the core methane and extractive in alcohol that um, representative of oil content is very low after pulping. And this will be a good potential to make uh, paper board. This is a result of tensile index. Uh, as we can see, uh, I put the, the line of the graph of EFB, the blue line, EFB using caustic soda 8%, uh, and the green line of EFB using caustic soda 6%. And as we can see, compared it to the commercial brown paper, the tensile index of our study shows uh, good quality, especially with uh, GSF, around 300. And also the birth index. This properties is important one in producing paper board. The birth index of 6% of caustic soda and 8% of caustic soda with the freeness around 300 is higher compared to the commercial brown paper that available in Indonesia. And also the brick and also ring rust this property is also important in producing paper board. Uh, we can see for uh, 6% and 8% as well, it's also higher compared to the commercial brown paper. And also for concora medium tester, this is uh, one of the important properties in producing medium. And we can see in 6% and 8% shows a very high uh, number compared to the commercial brown paper. This is the fiber line. As we can see, uh, EFB is a short fiber. And in Indonesia, we imported around 50% of recycled paper from outside countries. It means that we import long fiber. Uh, Indonesia, geography, we cannot produce long fiber. And compared to the fiber length of uh, uh, EFB pulp compared to the commercial brown paper, the fiber length is shorter. But this is a common, uncommon uh, study. Usually a shorter fiber length will give uh, lower physical properties, but unlike with EFB pulp using this technology. The density, the density of EFB is quite uh, lower compared to the density of commercial brown pepper. Because in commercial brown pepper, 
they usually uh, put uh, some additives, but using uh, this study, they only use 100% uh, of EAB car. That's why the density is uh, lower compared to the commercial brown pepper. And this will be uh, a good thing in producing of uh, duplex uh, pepper board. This is the fiber classification. As in the background, uh, recycled pepper can only effectively recycle five to seven times. But in Indonesia case, we didn't know about the recycled pepper that already available commercially. That's why we think it's important to get this data. As we can see, uh, the EFB pulp from of, uh, caustic soda, 6% and 8%, shows a good fiber classification compared to the uh, commercial brown pepper. As we can see in commercial brown pepper, the fiber uh, becomes shortened and also will increase the pass of 200 mass. So the summary of the first part is the product that fit to be produced by this EFD pulp, there are three, three types, is liner board, corrugated medium, base paper, laminating board, and this type of paper is usually used to as a food packaging. In Indonesia, we still use a food packaging from recycled paper, and it's not good. That's why we think it's important to introduce a new technology of using a virgin pulp from EFB. And the second type of the uh, paper board is a duplex board. This is a part two. Why I think it's important? Because this is a pilot project, so we need to calculate about the business model. The reason that it is need necessary to construct EFB pulp factory in your palm oil factory because transporting the EFB from palm oil factory to a pepper factory is not economically because of its bulkiness, high moisture content, more than 65% and also contain another non pulp material. That's why Palm oil factory has to access to necessary water supply and wastewater treatment method to the EFB pulp. Some palm oil factories generate their own electricity, and this is a very good potential to produce of EFB pump. And production costs can be reduced by using their surplus electricity. Discharge of EFB can be utilized directly as a raw material for pulp thus will prevent from piling up. This is an EFB pulp factory model. We try to calculate of a total site of a capacity of around 4,500 meters square with the pulp production around 50 bone dry ton per day. And the EFB as a raw materials will put around 78 Air, ton, air dry ton per day with electricity around 700 kilowatt hour per ADT. And water consumption, even though you think it's quite high, actually it still fulfills the equitable criterion for packaging paper production in Indonesia. It is around 30 meter metric per ton. And also for uh, caustic soda that we use is from the previous study is about 6% of caustic soda per volume of EAP. And the importance of this study, we didn't use steam at all. And from all this facility, it still fulfilled the equitable criterion for packaging paper production in Indonesia. And the total investment is not so high. It's around 7.3 million US dollars. This is a calculation of payback period. We tried to put five cases. The case zero is a current state. In Indonesia, pulp mill is located in um, Java Island. This is the first case. Actually, pulp mill usually located in outside 
Java Island. But because we're considering about farm mill should be very close to the palm oil mill, there are only one small uh, palm oil plantation is in West Java, or I mentioned this to Wakata City. As we can see, the payback period is not good. So we're considering about another case. How about if we introduce a methane gas from palm oil um, mill? And we can see the price of electricity right now in Indonesia around 1,400 rupees per kilowatt hour, and it will decrease into 200 rupees per kilowatt hour. And we can find a good number of payback per year. But we try to consider another case. How about if the pump mill near pump oil mill? So it means that there are no costs of EFB. At first, EFB costs around 35,000 rupees per ton. But if the pump mill near the pump oil mill, so the cost will be zero. And but it still give a not so good payback period number. About how about the pump mill located outside Java Island? This is the case number three. If the pump mill located outside Java Island, meanwhile the pepper mill still in Java Island, so it means that the transportation cost will increase. It will increase for from 42 US dollar into 70 US dollar. That's why the payback period is not so good. And the last case, and we think this is the best case of model, we combine the case number one with the case number three. We combine introducing a methane gas from Pome, and also we will locate it out near outside Java Island and also near palm oil mill. And we will get a payback period around 4.5 years is uh, uh, comparing with the price of OCC. And then how about if we put uh, income tax uh, zero? This model is the first model if we get help from Ministry of Environmental. And we will get a good payback period around 3.6 years. There are market potential of non-wood pulping plant in Indonesia. The pink area is the potential area, is a palm oil plantation near West Java and also near the pepper mill. And the potential area number two is some uh, palm oil plantation in the south of Sumatra but we still need a high transportation to transport pulp from South Sumatra into Java. And the potential area number three, it's in North Sumatra, the green circle is uh, very far because in North Sumatra, there are only one of pepper meal. And even though this is a uh, potential enough, but will not give any effect on national problem because there are only one pepper mill in North Sumatra. About potential area number four, this is a potential area that we recommend. And we think this is important because in Indonesia for the next couple of years, we will have a new capital city in East Kalimantan. So Indonesia government think that uh, Kalimantan Island will develop very hard and also industry also will develop as well as um, palm oil plantation. There are so many palm oil plantation in East Kalimantan. And then potential area number four, the pulp from East Kalimantan will deliver into the area of East Java. In East Java, there are so many recycled paper boards. 
So this study is not to replace of importing recycled paper from outside Indonesia, but this is as an alternative one. So this is the summary. Uh, the world's first business model in which the palm oil industry and paper industry cooperates in order to produce paper palm from EFB, from palm oil factory to be utilized as a material for the products. Existing corrugate board is formed with liner, corrugated medium, and other type of paper products made from OCC and mixed paper. EFB pulp can be used as a raw material for liner and corrugated medium and has potential as a substitute for OCC and mixed paper. And EFB pulp is appropriate for paper board, corrugated board, and plastic laminated wrapping pulp, not for printing paper or newsprint. EFB pulp factory is expected to construct near palm oil factory. Expected treatment capacity of collaborate palm oil factory is over EFB 60 ton per hour. And long distance between EFB pulp factory and the paper factory will cause, cause disadvantage. Electricity and transportation costs account for around 50% of manufacturing cost profit improvement can be expected by reducing this cost. Thank you very much for your attention. I will return it to Mrs. Takahashi. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now let's open question and comment from the audience. But we don't have enough time, so we can have one question. So, Augusta from University of Tsukuba, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair, for the opportunity. Uh, actually, I have... Uh, Two questions. Uh, one is technically about the mechanical part. Uh, about the sodium hydroxide effect in the mechanical part. You have uh, two kind of the concentration or you vary the concentration. Uh, and I pointed out that 6% and 8% you recommend for the making of the your mechanical up from the EFB, and I think it's promising for making the paper board. This is first question. Uh, about uh, what concentration you recommend? Six or eight, or there is some limitation for the sodium hydroxide in the mechanical up? And another question is about the tenoeconomic. Uh, I think one slide you have the one tenoeconomic. Uh, but I want to ask about the depreciation because depreciation should be, I think, should be the function of the time. So I want to ask about your annuity factor for each uh, uh, year for this you know, economic measurement. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, can I uh, directly answer? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for Mr. Augusta for the question. The first question, we recommend about 6% of caustic soda because if we use around 8% of caustic soda, it will not show a very huge difference in the quality. But if we considering about production into an industry, the differences of 2% is very uh, important because it will uh, give any changes in as a variable of the cost. If we increase the caustic soda, so the cost of chemicals also increase. That's why we choose 6%. And this model, we then calculate into a business model. As we can see in this slide, we choose a caustic soda of 6%. And for the second question about the depreciation, actually, actually we consider about the depreciation. As we can, as you can see in this slide, there are depreciation of the in US dollar of five different cases, and it's the same. It's the same around twenty-four point fifty-one US dollar. And this depreciation 
uh, we calculate around 30 years of the machinery with a non-stop of production. Thank you very much. And interest rate in Indonesia is 7%. Yes, Thank you. I agree with you. So thank, I'm sorry, but time is limited. So if you have another question, I would ap appreciate if you would discuss it later over dinner break. So thank you very much for your nice presentation. So mm -hmm. this session is now closed. Thanks to all the speaker for interesting session. Thank you very much. And after this session, we'll have dinner break for four hours. And after break, we will have next session. It starts from 9 p.m. Japanese time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairperson. I'd like to confirm this uh, evening session, uh, session three, uh, 9 to 11 p.m. Tokyo, uh, we use a different Zoom webinar. Uh, please confirm the invitation for a different Zoom webinar in your mailbox. Okay. And uh, this uh, session three is mainly uh, from USA and uh, Canada because of we have because we have a time difference between USA and Canada. But uh, very famous uh, professors uh, presented uh, some papers to us. So please join us uh, tonight, Japanese time, 9 to 11, but okay. Indonesia, 7 to 9. See you. Okay, see you. Thank you, Oi Sensei. I know. And uh, Effie. <laughs> You have another question from big person, uh, uh, Iwasaki-san, in your chat. I will forward his question to you, okay? Matsumoto先生? Hi, I'm not wrong. 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 I'm not wrong